Lamborghini Centenario uh, is for our engineering a kind of laboratory to prove the, competen the competence and also uh, the new innovation that we can have in the car business. And uh, our engineering touch uh, the most important uh, points of the car. First is engine with increase of power, chassis control, aerodynamics, uh, and at the end of the designer close all the package in a marvelous design. Now if we go through every single uh, component. The engine was uh, a big job in order to achieve uh, 770 horsepower, which was possible mainly due to an increase of RPM, and we have a maximum power at 8,600 RPM, and this is also due to increase of the volumetric efficiency of the engine, means a less drop pressure in the intake and also less drop pressure in the exhaust system. Other important feature of this car is the rear wheel steering, is the first application in a Lamborghini. This allowed to have a car with much more agility when we use the car in the handling track, but at the same time also to have much more stability when we go at higher speed and when we have necessity to have a stability of the car. About aerodynamic was made a completely new study of the front of the car, of the underfloor of the car in order to increase the downforce without to penalize too much of the drag of the car. And what we achieve is a result that is two times more higher in terms of uh, aerodynamic efficiency compared to the previous Aventador and this is also due to the a rear big spoiler that is higher in a car that lifts up of 150 mm and can be also uh, um, rotated in order to give a more downforce in the rear in some particular condition. At the end the designer have a big challenge to dress in a marvelous way and also to be able to surprise without to follow what was in the past the other one off like the the Nano or the Concept J, but with a completed design shape that is much more, uh, let me say, harmonic, is much more uh, innovative, and really to be able to, to make a perfect tribute to the 100th anniversary of Ferruccio Lamborghini. The Aventador SV is an Aventador that is more and less. More horsepower, 50 of them. Less weight, 110 pounds. A little less time to 60, about a tenth of a second. And more RPM to the red line, another 150 on the clock. The result is the fastest production Lamborghini ever, and they got there with tuning and tech. Spotting an SV is easy. Look for the four pipe exhaust, unique wheels, and oh yeah that wing.
Now, Aventadors in general are no Ford Super Duty. They're already light cars, already full of aluminum and carbon fiber body panels and structure throughout. So where did they find another 110 pounds to take out of this thing? What they did was put more carbon fiber in around the body components. They also took out the head unit. No nav, no radio, no audio system unless you really beg for it. Carpets? No. The seats, they're really church pews, are carbon fiber shells with almost no accommodation. You can move them back and forth, that's it. You'll feel the rivets under your butt. Notice a very different LCD instrument panel than we saw in the base of Entador. More prominence to the RPMs, shift indicators, and G-force gauge. And yellow. Now back here in the engine room is also more familiar territory. The architecture of this engine is the same as a non-SV. Six and a half liter V12 with direct injection, dry sump lubrication. What you're missing is any kind of blower or turbo. They don't do that in this engine room. However, you do have a lot of tweaks to the breathing. You've got a variable intake system. You've got a variable exhaust system. And in between the two, you've got a differently curved variable valve timing system. All of it about getting air in and out faster, and that's where the numbers get better. 750 horse, and it also comes at a higher RPM redline, 8,400. Torque's the same, though, 508 pound-feet. That's okay. It's still plenty. And all that goes up through kind of an interesting transmission, where many supercars use a DCT, an automated dual-clutch manual gearbox. These guys use a SCT. Instead of ping-ponging the power through two clutches, they ping-pong the power through multiple shift rods. Hence, it's called an ISR, Independent Shift Rod Technology. And thanks to that big wing out back, all that power delivery turns this car into a rocket on the road as opposed to putting it in low Earth orbit. 0 to 60, 2.8. Shift times are around 50 milliseconds. That's nipping at F1 territory. Going the other direction, all SVs have big carbon ceramic brakes standard. They haul this car to a stop from 60 in less than 100 feet. Okay, if I gotta put this guy into a single phrase, it's this. One sinewy SOB. First question I know you've got is, how does the power feel on this versus a non-SV? How do you possibly tease that out unless you're on the track? And we're not. I mean, come on, another 50 horse when you're already at this level? I'll be honest, I can't feel it. What I do feel, though, is the wonderful breathing they use to get there, and that you notice at almost every RPM range. Sweet. Now, it wasn't long ago that I drove the base of Entador, and I recall it being a little more compliant than this. This one's got a real grit to it. It's just hard everywhere, from where you sit to the heavy, heavy load you get on the wheel with this new adaptive steering system. And, of course, it's got the adaptive suspension as well. magneto rheological technology that I find is calibrated very firm, as you might imagine in this car. I'm bringing that up because a lot of supercar makers these days actually are trying to make their supercars more palatable on the road every day. This one doesn't make such compromises. Well, here's where my job gets real easy. CNET style is the only style you can buy a Lamborghini Aventador SV. They're all loaded by definition, and that's why they cost a little over $530,000. You're not going to afford one of these sitting there watching YouTube. But it doesn't really matter if you get back to work, because these are all sold out anyway. 500 copies, that's all they made. What the SV really stands for is the power of nuance. Getting some weight off the ground. Moving air through the engine more elegantly. And moving air over the body more purposefully. It also reminds us that Lamborghini really is the Sammy Davis Jr. of car makers. Firmly believing that nothing succeeds like excess, Frank. Lamborghini LD724 is the replacement of the Gallardo of today. We have a build the most driver-oriented super sport car 
and uh, we have uh, inserting this car a V10, an upper aspirated engine, and for the first time uh, what we call Lamborghini doppia frizione, means a dual clutch gearbox 7 speed that we integrated with a completely full electronic four wheel drive system. Also in this car we have taken experience coming from the Ventador and we have realized a, what uh, we call hybrid chassis that is a perfect integration of carbon fiber and aluminium glued and rivets together in order to have the best performance in terms of weight and stiffness of the chassis. To guarantee to be able to apply the best to the dynamic behavior we have installed the manual ride system and the dynamic steering that for the first time are coupled together in a super sport car. This dynamic steering allowed us to have a different ratio from 9 to 1 till 17 to 1 against what is in the standard car of 16.2 to 1. Our customer with a single click of the button anima, that means uh, soul in Italian, can change the dynamic behavior of the Huracan moving from strada through sport and arriving to Corsa, changing the completely behavior and all what happened is controlled from Lamborghini Piattaforma Inerziale. It's a new system that uh, have under control all the functionality of the car. All this is what we call distinctive technology. The main technical data of the new car are a capacity of 5.2 liter V10 engine with an output in terms of power of 610 horsepower. We have coupling in the car a completely new carbon ceramic brake system that is made with two discs of 380 and 356 millimeter and we couple with six piston caliper in the front and four piston caliper in the rear. About tire, we have a front and rear tire of 20 inch, and the car is able to achieve a maximum speed superior of 325 km per hour, an acceleration of 0 100 in less of 3.3 seconds. In terms of fuel consumption, we have achieved a CO2 of 290 grams per kilometer and a weight of 1,422 kg.